to another martial arts reacts i'm your host i'm maze you're watching country karate and we are going to check out armchair violence i really love this channel if you do not know who armchair violence is go check him out for being as young as he is he's really really smart and he seems to know a lot about martial arts did you know that and he's talking about central line uh theory is fake and made up the center line all Campbell uh, practitioners talk about the center line. I was talk, uh, taught about the center line, and he says it is basically useless. It is fake and made up. So let's see what uh, Armchair Violence has to say. I don't think he's ever said his actual name, so I don't know his actual name. But uh, let's see what he has to say about the center line. And I do agree with the center line is fake and it's made up. Uh, principles of Wing Chun and its descendant arts like Jeet Kune Do is centerline theory. Centerline theory is the idea that there's an imaginary line that runs down the axis of my body and the axis of my opponent's body. The plane that connects these two lines is the center line. Yes, the center line is actually a center plane. I didn't make up the name. The theory states that controlling the center line will allow you to deflect nearly all of your opponent's attacks while quickly delivering your own. And yes, there's other terminology about central lines, mother lines, controlling your opponent mother lines i know there's other names that people give but it doesn't matter what the name is they all do not work center and a whole bunch of boxes but we're going to stick to the most commonly espoused basic outline of the theory which is that controlling the center line allows you to hit vital areas such as the face throat solar plexus and groin but your opponent can't hit any of yours every yeah, see, that's I've made a video recently on this, so go check that out in my playlist of Kempo Sucks or Martial Arts uh, playlist, where I can touch you, but you can't touch me. That's what he's talking about. I see that a lot in Kempo. Lineage seems to have a slightly different take on centerline theory, so before you start screaming in the comments about how my terminology is wrong, understand... Uh, I love that. ...and that your lineage might just be an outlier. Unfortunately, no matter the particulars of how you define centerline theory, it's nonsense and it is a useless concept for hand-to-hand. -hand. To understand why centerline theory is a fake, bad way of thinking, let's first understand where it is applicable, which is primarily in weapons combat. Specifically, longsword. If we're longsword fighting, most of my attacks will involve crossing the centerline to some degree. Remember I said that he knows a lot, like, I mean, he knows about, about swords, he knows about weapons. And what's interesting is I don't believe he has a black belt in any style of martial arts, hence the name arch armchair violence. Degree. If my opponent's weapon occupies the center line, any attack where my sword crosses that line can't actually hit my opponent. All they have to do is advance their weapon forward to completely stifle my strikes. If I move my weapon down or take my hands off the center line to sneak around their weapon, they can deliver a devastating strike down the center line. Even if they first defend my strike, their weapon is still closer to the center, giving them effective control of the main avenue of attack. Now, this sounds like it completely confirms center line as a valid theory and a good way to fight however this do you guys think so in the comments down below he's got a lot of good points right here this concept has virtually no application outside of weapons combat to understand why we need to look at the differences between a longsword fight and a fist fight first of all punches don't come down the center line punches originate from your shoulders neither of which are on the center line a strike yep. from my shoulder that's true like even if i'm standing right here and I throw a punch, it's, it's coming from the socket. And that's what he's talking about. All right. If, if I turn and I'm facing you, it still comes from the shoulder. Even though I might be in the center line, it still comes from the shoulder shoulder to my opponent's face is not necessarily going to intersect the center line at all. In longsword, both of my hands are on the weapon, which splits the difference between my shoulder, putting it in the middle of my body, and roughly on the center line. Most of my right, because sword strikes will naturally... If you have your hands on the sword, both of them on the sword, it might work on the center line. But when you're using your fists, your fists are not both on the center line. Nobody fights with their hands you know, together like this, because you get hit in the face, or like this, because you would get hit in the face. 
be pretty close to the center line. My punches, however, will naturally be off of it. This means that my opponent can't just press forward to stifle punches. They have to actually... Right, they have to do the actual, actually move out of the way or into the damage zone of the punch. Actually move their hands, which is going to constantly force their hands off the center line. In Longsword, this doesn't matter because there's no other weapon that can take advantage of that opening. Their only weapon is trapped on the outside. However, in a fist fight, my other hand can quickly exploit that gap they just created. Their ability to counter on the center line is also greatly reduced when compared with weapons combat. When I throw a strike, virtually all of my main center line targets leave the center line, which means because you got that shoulder rotation. All right, that's what he's doing. He's just, he's, he's rotating and he's moving his head out of the way so he doesn't get hit. Means that a direct center line attack won't actually hit anything vital. If a sword strike comes down on my shoulder, I'm as good as dead. However, a punch landing on my shoulder won't even get my attention. And if you defend a strike and then attempt to track my head movement with your counter attack, where are your hands? Not on the center line, that's for sure. It would have been quicker and easier to block an attack if your hands had started off the center line. Finally, the biggest reason that Wing Chun's idea of center line is unrealistic is because constantly controlling the center line isn't even a concept in Longsword. I purposely chose to demonstrate a Longsword guard that most closely resembles a Wing Chun guard. But the vast majority of Longsword guards seem to give very little thought to controlling the center line. This is because the actual lesson of center line is not that you can command it. The lesson is to constantly use footwork to reposition it. If my opponent's weapon is on the center line, they haven't won because I'm not dumb enough to lunge directly at their sword. I'm going to engage them and then use lateral movement to change where the center line is. By taking a quick step, I have now created a new center line that I control. But they are, of course, then going to do the same thing. The center line is not a static fortification. It's an ever-shifting positional advantage that nobody ever keeps for more than a second. And guards so often ignore center line because keeping your weapon that close to your opponent is a terrible way to generate power. And whether I'm attempting to cut through heavy gambeson or crack somebody in the jaw, generating power solely by stepping into your strike often fails to do sufficient damage. Being able to move your arms or swing your weapon is critical in delivering a meaningful strike. And I'm sure some nerd out there is thinking, but boxers keep their hands in front of their face. Isn't that basically the same thing as guarding the center line? No, it's not. No, they don't actually care about the line. Putting your hands in front of your face creates defensive traffic, which means you're occupying the space that your opponent wants to punch through. But this... That's true, because when you throw a punch... You're, you're not going straight. You know, they always say the closest distance between two points is a straight line, which is also incorrect. Because you're not going through a straight line. You're not going to center line. You're not going straight. Uh, even a jab, you're not going on the center line. And especially like a hook or an uppercut. This is a very different concept from center line theory. If I put my hands here, I have a perfectly legitimate guard, and neither of my hands are on the center line. My opponent's punches could reasonably be coming from anywhere, which means I can't guard a single plane. I have to guard a whole three-dimensional area, and my hands can start from pretty much anywhere in that space. You see plenty of combat sports athletes with their hands vaguely in front of yeah, I have said in numerous past videos, it doesn't matter where you put your hands because Thai boxers have their hands like this, and then you got boxers, and then you, you karate guys. I mean, hands are in different spots. As long as it's in that plane area that he's talking about. ...of their face, but virtually none of them put their hands on a line because putting them on that line makes it difficult to guard the rest of the three-dimensional area. Within unarmed striking, I have only ever seen one single practical application of the center line concept, and that's to get off of it. Most commonly, it's the idea that you should move your head off the center line when throwing an attack in order to preemptively slip your opponent's counterpunch. It's usually abbreviated with the simple instruction, GET YOUR HEAD OFF LINE! The only thing any fighter needs to know about the center line is to get off of it. Continuously controlling and advancing on the center line is actually a technical error that can be exploited. So, I really like this video and I'm so glad like somebody talked about it because it seems like every Kempo person and a few other styles that he mentioned 
they rely too much on the center line and they actually believe that it's true. But he's right, it's, it's the shoulders when you throw your punch, that's where your punch is coming from. Center line would be the uh, middle of your body. And once you turn those sh shoulders, you're no longer on the center line anyway. What do you guys think of armchair violence? All right, I will see you guys in the next video. Please subscribe to Armchair Violence, subscribe to myself, and I'll see you guys in the next Martial Arts Reaction.